Hello, and welcome to my Therapist Plays Disco Elysium analysis series. So I have had kind of a personal mission since the early stages of the game to make things right with Kuno. So Kuno and I did not get off to the best start in this playthrough. And I've been role playing Harry as someone who kind of sees the world in terms of power dynamics. And Kuno was one of the first people who really challenged his authority as a police officer. Something that our character has a lot of conflicting and I would say insecure thoughts and beliefs about. And so Kuno represents a centerpiece of this struggle really more so in how we're trying to overcome the anxieties around authority. And so we've decided that it's very important we make things up with Kuno and not just for us, but I continue to say that you have to look at the kids of this world to understand everything that wraps around them. Whether it's mental health or the political systems at work, the kids who experience this world are a direct result of it. And so when we look at someone like Kuno and the kinds of opportunities he has not had and the oversight that he clearly doesn't have and just the way he views himself and other people, I can think of no better way to try to put some good into this somewhat depressing world than to try to help someone like Kuno. Maybe, just maybe, if we can get him on the right path, he'll give something back to the world down the line as well. So on today's episode, I'm going to be doing basically anything I can to uh, make things right with Kuno and get him on the straight and narrow. All of that's coming up today, so let's get into it. Okay, back to trying to get some fucking money in this depressing world. Uh, we were trying to get onto that rooftop. I know that we can't get into this area yet, as far as I can tell. We're here in the waterfront area. If I think about... I don't know. Is there a way to get... Is there maybe a way we can go further down this way? This is the waterfront. Okay. Why can't I travel, like, southwest here? Maybe I can. What are we thinking about? So We're thinking about you stuff. You really let yourself go. It's a disgrace, but Coach Physical Instrument is going to get you back in prime condition, even if it takes a million push-ups. Coach Physical Instrument, does that mean you'll call me a maggot and Nancy boy to motivate me? Does a master swordsman insult his own blade? No, I'm going to turn you into an athletic benchmark, you big pussy. Okay, forge me into organic steel. It's going to take blood, sweat, piss, and tears. But when I'm done with you, boy, you will be a master athlete. Wait, why? <laughs> Let's do this, coach. I'm with you. Fuck yeah, this is the kind of optimistic motivation we need. It's the kind of thing we need to solve this case. Behold, world. Here walks a sportsman, hands choked and hair kept back with a bandana. The Homo Athleticus. Okay. I will take it. Can I not go any further this way? Oh, I can. I think. Who's that? And I've already been down this way. And the bridge is still down. Okay. I don't think I can do anything with this. Uh, I need cash money. Is there any money over here? No. I wish this guy would just give us some money. Um... Okay, let's try getting on the roof again, maybe. 
How the fuck do I get up there? It seemed like... What did I need for this again? An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. Okay, well, let's just try this. Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite. What? That's why they're too orderly. 28%, baby! The flashlight has a, has, a, has a hidden perception bonus. I knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> There's a secret hidden door behind the panels of Eternite. That's why they're too orderly. Pull the panels aside. There it is. You see a shabby little door. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. What is this, Dan? A tool shed? Let's investigate. Oh, Kim, you've never said m any more beautiful words than let's investigate. I th I, this is gonna be a fucking gold mine here. Okay, this is where the case really busts itself wide open. Let's fucking do it. What do we got? Let's investigate. An empty tube of magno magnesium. Ah, magnesium. Something. We're pretty low on magnesium right now. <laughs> or on morale. I think I need more chromium in my diet. A silver plate with traces of bone yellow Be powder. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. The okay. lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. Someone has taken narcotics here. Perhaps the police sh should interfere. I wasn't thinking about taking it. I swear I was just thinking about justice. I've heard amphetamines make you a really good detective. Are you a really good detective? So I genuinely think that my character, clearly he is um, still affected by the sight of drugs as even any recovering addict would tell you is what we might just call a trigger, right? Um, Let's just approach it with curiosity. Are you a really good detective? No, I'm just a regular detective. Thank you very much. Still a damn good one, Kim. Someone has taken narcotics here. Perhaps the police should interfere. Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. However... He points to the ladder in the see corner. See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? The secret path the local kids use. That's a great point, Kim. That is a great point. Okay, we didn't even we can't even do the drugs if we wanted to. Get out of the way or get fucked up. Oh, this is like Wait. The secret ladder that the kids use. Is this Oh, is this Kuno's fucking amphetamines? That's, ah, uh, Kuno. Okay, we're on the roof at least. We're on the roof, baby. I cannot believe we passed that check. We, <laughs> there are so many parts of this game that we probably skipped over because I, I completely shortcut some of the hardest checks. And then I completely fail at some of the easiest ones. Restoration pillars keep the ruins together. Oh, money! There's money on the ground! Money! Cash money. Let's go. Let's check out that bucket. What's this? Postcard. What do we got? Postcard depicts an ill-advised residential area overlooking the Jamrock Quarter. 13-story buildings line the hillside like sarcophagi. An ominous fog already rising from behind. These are the last boom years. In 39, the project fails catastrophically, leaving behind an opiate and hepatitis B infested slum. Okay. Something we can sell, perhaps. Uh, let's check out that box. Okay. 
Okay, some sort of health potion. Got some more money on the top of the building. Some cash money. Okay. We need a couple more. It's not quite enough yet. Anything else we can do up here? Set back down. So the kids are doing drugs, which is pretty bad. God damn it, Kuno. I will get you that fucking book, even if it costs me my night at the Whirling and Rags. Let's, uh, let's ask him. Have you come to make your offer into Kuno? Mm, doesn't look like we can actually ask him anything. Please don't waste time on nonsense. God, this is the one thing that I, like, <laughs> Kim, you and I totally disagree on. The lieutenant does not approve of this at all. I don't care. Don't listen to the blind fuck. You can pay tribute to Kuno with drugs or cigarettes or some wheels. Kuno could use some wheels. Motorized carriage shit. I don't really want to give him the truck. I want to give him the book. I need money though. Snap out of it, Kuno. Wait, what? Is he in a, an amphetamine daze? I'll die before I squeal, pig. Hey, kid. What's this kid shit? Fucking mind games. I'd rather die than squeal. Get the fuck out of here, face. You got done. Talk to me. I'll die before I squeal, pig. Murder was the case. Was the case they gave me. Okay. Uh, anything else in the fucking trash can, maybe? The trash container stands in the spring snow. The, the smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. Uh, the okay, container sounds a muffled gong. Okay. Let's try going to the dock again, I guess. Kind of explored all this stuff. I really just need some cash money. Um, what is this, this is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Oh, that's, yeah. There's nothing there that I can do yet. 3%, no way I'm passing that. Um, try this again, maybe? A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance to the apartment building. It's locked. This could be a way into the apartment building the smoking man vanished into. Ah, the smoking man! Hey, the, are you there? I've checked that backyard but couldn't get in there. Good. We had enough problems with bums and drunks and thieves loitering in the hallway. You have no business here. 97%. Come on! I don't even need a tomato for this. You're well versed in the kind of threatening legalese that implies criminal liability, but in fact has no meaning whatsoever. Ma'am, your non-compliance is hindering a police matter. I may be forced to refer you for potential prosecution. I know my rights, and don't you mom me, boy. Miss! Would it help if we offer to show you our badges? Hold your horses. <laughs> I was bracing for a fail, yeah. <laughs> Me too. I don't care about your stinking badge. Just come in. Okay. We're in! Alright, where's the money at? It's, all, it's really all about money. I will come back to you. There's... I... Cash! 
There's cash just lying around. <laughs> Thank you for letting me in. I've got to investigate this place first. <laughs> Look, I already know that this is pissing off someone. Look, the way I play this game is just the way I play it, you know? If this bothers you, consider why. Like, why is it necessary for me to have a perfect playthrough or to even do the, the right thing? Like, like I said, at the end of the day, I'm enjoying this, you know? And if you've enjoyed it, me not enjoying it the same way doesn't take away how you enjoyed it. There's just money lying around. I'm rich. I'm rich with uh, potential and possibility. An old shoe rack, boots, sneakers, and old slippers. Apartment 12, a large rumbling. Uh, I should leave. There's a, there's a treasure slumbering behind that wall. Eviction notices and missing pets. This box is filled with cleaning chemicals, detergent. Cash? Ah. Oh. Flip up glasses. Logic? Could use some logic. Could make some logical deduct deductions. Oh, there's a balcony. There's gotta be money in there. Money! Easy. Cigarette butts and electrical wires. Okay. Let's go find the smoking man. Oh, there's a blue thing. The, like, the amount of cash that's just lying around. <laughs> Not like it's a lot of money, but... Someone's growing rosemary thyme and a cactus. Okay. I'm very familiar with those. I do live in the desert. Check out that door. Just a door. Nothing for you here right now. Okay. Yeah, I've got seven real. I've got almost enough to buy that book. I swear to God, I do not care if I don't have a place to sleep. I am buying that book for Kuno. The door department 30. Voices from within. Singing along to some buoyant dance track. Department 29. Complete silence. Okay. A door to be remembered. All right. There's nothing up here right now, as far as I can tell. Let's go back down. Why are some of the containers orange, others greens, and others blue? I don't know. I'm actually not sure myself. Is that the book I can give him? Yes, I think it is. I think I can give him the, the Man from Hjelmdal book. Bullet the holes. spread pattern of these bullet holes makes your chest ache. Your breath grows heavier. Let's get a closer examination on those holes. You peer into the faded marks in the stone. They peer back like an endless row of tiny black holes. Sweat starts trickling down your brow. This is bad mojo, man! Fucking horrible mojo! The end draws now! Your chest feels tight. Looking at oh, them. shit. It's closing in. Caving in, ever tighter. Your breathing grows even heavier. You okay, Dare? The lieutenant's sudden voice cuts like a blade, bringing you out of a stupor. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Man, I started feeling really bad for a second. Might be the after effects of your past escapade. What are you looking at? What's with all these bullet holes? I've seen a lot of them around. Remnants from the revolution. These are over half a century old. So no crime has happened Perhaps here. a crime of a sort ages ago. But no, these do not warrant an investigation. Okay, what can you tell me about the revolution? Not much. I don't have a fresh perspective on it. Should we go? I love Kim. I, I love that he responds this way. That's exactly what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> like word for word what I would say. Uh I don't have a fresh perspective on that. 
I don't feel comfortable giving you my opinion because it's either not fully formed, it's not like super comprehensive. I'm not confident that I could distinguish fact from opinion. You know, I like I don't want to impose my beliefs on someone in place of historical context. Like there's lots of times where I would say something exactly like this. Uh, did we try going down here yet? This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. Let's just uh, press our ear first. The leather upholstery is worn and rough against your jaw. You don't hear any movement. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. Let's give it a little round. You knock silently. The upholstery muffles the sound. No response comes from the apartment. Interesting. I guess no one is in. Uh, let's get Kim involved. What do you think of the fact that we're doing this? Let's be honest. This isn't what I joined the RCM for, but every day tells you something new about yourself. Apparently, okay. working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. So you don't mind if I unlock the door? If the Merc Tribunal happens before we solve this, we are looking at casualties. What's one unlocked door compared to that? You know, Kim? You make a good point. On the other hand, we could just leave and tell Evrat we opened the door. No one seems to be tailing us to see if we actually did it. Lie to Evrat? Is that a good answer? Yes. Presenting a fabrication is known to get results here and there. You took this task. You make the call. I feel like you and Kim would either have great rapport or you would have one conversation and never meet again. <laughs> Maybe the second one. I think we would be two damn good but boring cops together. The door is right here. You can just open it and be done with this. Besides, if you never open it, you're never going to find out what's behind the door. That's a good point. Uh, let's open it. You try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. Thoughts like there could be money behind there. Well, buddy, you opened it. No need to go inside. It would be rude. I'll take that into consideration. Good job. Let's go now. I'm sure there's nothing interesting in there. I Only disagree. Curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Maybe there's treasure in there. A white alligator. A fountain of quicksilver. As you hold the open door, you can feel the air moving. A little draft. A whistle. We're going in. We're going in. Let's check the cupboards and uh, bookcases first for cash. There is a shirt. There is a book. A hidden word of walking sticks. You can feel the warmth of the red sun. This the flag. is the flag of Rivershaw, the suzerainty. Uh, okay. What's with the this sun? This isn't just one sun. But there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. What is that? It's an optical atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Revachol got its flag. Uh, okay. Let's point at it. Mm-hmm. The tenant is an old-fashioned guy. Uh, I don't... I'm not going to bow down to something I don't know what it is, so... The flag doesn't seem to mind. It's just a colorful fabric with a sun sewn onto it. Like all feudal flags, it looks like a children's drawing. Yeah, whatever. Now someone's going to tell me, Brady, you're missing something. I, I don't care. A row of like, mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure, a dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols, a broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes, and others. 
Look, there's probably some super interesting thing if I bowed down to a flag, but like, I don't have any context for that. I don't know why I would do that as a real person, nor do I know why Harry would do that as the character I'm role playing. So I'm not going to do it. Like, I don't care if I'm missing content. Like, to me, it doesn't make sense to do. So, uh, let's tap a little on. ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. <laughs> You're supposed to psychoanalyze the piece of fabric. I, like, I think that's what some people want me to do. I got nothing meaningful to say about that. I have, I have nothing meaningful to say. Even if you think I have something meaningful to say, like, you'll notice there are things that probably have a lot of depth to them that I just completely ignore, like... <laughs> my brain is my brain. There are things that I'm gonna, like, really latch onto, and then there's stuff that I'm just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> They're just not important to me. <laughs> Sweating and because of engaging with the thought of politics, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm less concerned about engaging with politics at this point. Uh, I think we've sort of realized that I was never afraid of engaging with political ideas. What I was intimidated by is the terminology because I just am not equipped to define or identify the ideas associated with the specific ideas. And so I try to avoid them. But I have very clearly defined political views that I need to navigate the world and do my job, and that's satisfactory for me. Um, anyways. The images betray a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. What do I mean The owner of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. Oh. He's a typical asshole, then. This person is unhappy. I can see the that. The lieutenant picks up one of the mugs, then puts it back down with a look of disdain. Ah, oh, didn't the racist guy have some mugs? Maybe this is where he lives. I'm beginning to feel better about breaking into this man's apartment. There you go, Kim. Do, I, do we have one of those mugs? Yes. Your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. The same humor, the same mocking lines. There's the missing teen soldier. Whoever lives here might have used the Whirling's container to dump his trash. Um... And now they've drawn the ire of the Union. The plot thickens, as they say. So... Whoever lives here might have used the Whirling's container to dump his trash, and now they've drawn the ire of the Union. Okay. Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. Perhaps I should. Do you really think it's the same person who put the dead man's clothes in the who trash? Knows? I'm not expecting too much from this clothes in the trash lead either way. It might turn out to be some random local matter, but still, a nice coincidence. Uh, Magra, uh, Mega Growl, uh, it's the mug you found in the trash. Just a reminder. That is an appreciated reminder. I, if there's things that I, it's a, it's a certain line. It's like, I'm happy to be reminded by things like that, that are just details versus like something someone said to me that could be a huge character reveal if I pieced it together. Like, Maybe don't tell me stuff like that. But it, but if I did something, like, I found a mug in the trash and I, I'm sitting here like, did I get that from the racist guy? No, I got it in the trash. That's, that's totally okay. You can just... That's a good reminder. Yeah, no character spoilers. Don't remind me of what someone said at some point, but you can remind me where I found something. I think that's pretty helpful because I genuinely forgot. I was like, where the fuck did I get this? Um... Let's move on. I thought we got it from the racist guy. I forget why. Whoever lives here admires fair-haired fantasy heroes with big muscles. So probably Hjelmdal. Maybe he has a... Does he have a Hjelmdal book? Can I steal a book? Ah. Some good old magnesium. Let's, let's blast one of those. Okay. 
Okay, so couldn't get a book. What about stuff like if you got a thought from one of your skills that was important but forgot about it? I don't know. I mean, use your intuition. Like, if it's something that I... Like, if it's a detail, like, yeah, I picked something up and I forgot where this item came from, that's fine. But if it's... If learning about it is going to change my perspective on a character or on the case, probably just leave it out because, like, that's going to lead me to start thinking about things. Just remembering where I got a mug, like, <laughs> that's that's not... That's not really important, so it's fair game, let's say. Uh, okay, well, I guess now my question is, like, why did Everett Claire want us to break into that? Um, Everett Claire seems to want the bloodbath to happen so that he can take over. Like he's like sacrificing his own union members. Um, so that he can exert his authority. He does not want this case to be solved. He wants as many of the people dead as possible so that he can make the strongest claim for authority. It's kind of how I'm reasoning this out in my head. So... He doesn't want people picking through the trash. Why would he want me to go in here? He wants me to develop a suspicion that this person was involved in the murder. Maybe. Maybe he thinks he can influence who I suspect to be the murderer by pointing me in the right direction. Because I seem to recall he said, just go in there. I don't want you to do anything. I just want you to go in there. He didn't ask me to get something. He didn't ask me to return something. He just said, go in. He wants me to think that this person is involved in the murderer, which makes me think that they are not. They're just a mad racist person. Um, okay. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. Oh, yes. Yeah, so this is good clarification. I was just, yeah, I remember I was, I was flat out wrong. Didn't he just say go open the door? He didn't say go in. However, what detective would I be if I just went and opened a door and didn't go in? I, I, my suspicion is that he thinks he he would assume that I would still go do that. Maybe. Fucking maybe. There's more going on here than we think. <laughs> uh, this isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism... Uh, okay. Let's inspect the further. The antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the Communards during the revolution. Okay. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. <laughs> I just know I'm going to disappoint somebody with what what I'm about to do. <laughs> what is, why is it upside down? To symbolize the toppling of the old order. Okay. Also, some social democrats were already using it. Okay. Why is it because white? Because white is the color of peace. That's good. I like peace. What does it evoke in me? Smug superiority, aesthetic musings, the triumph of capital is undeniable. But... Maybe the guns were sort of cool. Revolutionaries had loads of guns. Okay. 
I have no thoughts on this. Genuinely, I don't. I don't have any thoughts this on this. This door that. has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number eleven. Let's examine it's it. A solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Then that is Better what we shall do. Those cutters, you won't get very far otherwise. I'm gonna get the fucking cutters out. Let's bust in there. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says. Pretty sure we had some stuff for interfacing. Maybe we already have it on. Gloves. I don't know. Bum hat? I don't know if that helps. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. Uh, no not. reply. Okay, let's bust it open. The shackle snaps like a twig, and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. <laughs> it's so lucky it this stream. Possible to enter now. My luck is back, baby! I've been fucking nailing every check. We're on the up and up. Me and Kim. After you, detective. After me. Let's fucking go. Bust in there. Where's the crime? More communism stuff? We're doing lots of investigating. Oh, a bullet. And a jacket. Okay. Critical theory on the mistrust. Politics stuff. Guns as more politics. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Mazov. Kim, who is this Kras Mazov? He's known as the father of scientific communism, also known as Mazovianism. His theories about economic history greatly influenced, some would even say sparked, the anti-centennial revolution. Whoever lives here needs to learn how the economy actually works. <laughs> Why does this tenant have a bust of him the in the The white star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. Uh, yeah, mm, sure. I I'll suspect that. that's exactly what they are trying to do. There aren't many communists around. Not after the revolution. Some youth still keep the ideology going, it seems. Okay. That's fair. I I don't really know anything about communism, so I yeah. Boogie Street. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. Knock. The walking stops abruptly. You can feel tension on the other side. Knock again. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. That was the wrong line of dialogue. This is the police. Do I have to open the door? You hear the cackling of heels again as the other side walks right up to the door. Her tone is now getting a defensive edge. Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. Regular law official. What? You've done it, Harry. Whatever else you are, you're also boring now. It was not easy. You spent most of your life trying to funk up every nook and cranny of your personality. When someone says something political, the first three thoughts in your head are a ludicrous hodgepodge of communism, fascism, and stock tips. <laughs> when they ask you why you did something, it's superstardom, apocalypse, or the mea culpus of the flagellant cop monk. It's not easy reaching for the fourth option, the normal one. But you have. And now, you're not just crazy. You're also boring. Uh, yes! <laughs> I like being boring. Ah, minus one to shivers and emblem empire. Dull but solid in a strong grasp of reality. All learning caps raised to three, though. Okay. 
Well, I guess what I could do is um, turn it off. Can't I turn it off or something? Oh, I have to, f I have to forget it. Well, it's not really that important to me right now. What is important is getting as much money as I possibly can as fast as I possibly can. Boring cop is the best cop. Look, there's a lot of people who were like, oh, it's not good to be a sorry cop. Uh, another boring cop. Like, I don't know what to tell you, friends. I like being a sorry cop. I think it's fitting for the narrative uh, of this character and how we've been playing him. And I think I just am a boring cop in the context of this game in real life. I like being a boring cop. Okay, Kim gets by just fine being plenty boring himself. And at the same time, I find him very interesting. Okay, we'll get to you. I'll 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 blast you with my flashlight. Just you wait. I'm gonna check out this room first. What do we got here? A shift in temperature. The air chills around you. Dust settles on the stony floor. A former sides. architect stands before a slice of window, a room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still and frozen, with temperatures falling down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Look around it's yourself. It's clean and empty, with new tapestry embellishing the walls. A standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool in the middle of the room. The plant Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects the room with the neighboring apartment. Ideas for arranging the furniture have been jotted down. Her face is red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping the plan. Traces of sadness are visible in her expression. Okay. Thank you, Shivers. I feel a little more connected to the unreality. Money and health. Okay. We are damn close to that book. Kuno! Kuno! Let's see if she has any money. Do you have any money? Give me a moment. <laughs> you just get blasted with the flashlight. An elderly woman is leaning on her broom, her knuckles white as bone. She seems to be having difficulty breathing. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> First, I'm the policeman that you asked to open the door. Are you sure you don't want to see my badge? Well, I don't have my badge. Are you all right? Should I call a doctor? I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> the flashlight. It's a poor thing. You're being investigated. You're still worried. It's very worrying. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? Who are you? I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. Do you live here? If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the cold room. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. And that's all I need from this world. And all she gets, too. The coastal wind beats down hard on the cold room door outside. Splashes of waves make the balcony slippery. I am looking for Martin Martinet. Is that fake fucking name? Oh, you'll find plenty of Martins here. Don't you worry. She smiles a gapped tooth smile when she, she hears you, you mention the name. What do you mean? I wasn't joking. Hey, brain. Someone played a trick on you. What? Martin Martinez. Shocked. Is a name for anyone who comes from Martinez. Like Jim Jamrock or Raoul Ravagel. Jim Jamrock. Johnny Oops. Disco! You really didn't get the joke there. I thought it was obvious. Anyway, officer, we don't have the witness's name. <laughs> he stops before he offends. Thanks, kid. Thanks for thanks for caring about my bruised ego. 
How about a young male in his mid-twenties, dark hair, skinny build, a smoker on the balcony? Do you know where he lives? I gotta, does this flashlight have an intensity? I gotta blast her more with this light. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil. Right? Yeah, he smokes like the devil and he's selfish too. He wouldn't give me one. Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? He's wanted for murder. He's going away for life. No trouble. I just want to talk to him. Do you know where he lives? Talk? <laughs> what are you laughing at? He lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Mm, Thank okay. you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Maybe we have to wait till the evening. Ask away, policeman. Do you know who lived in the foreclosed apartment? What the hell am I supposed to know? Another nut job, I assume. She really doesn't like those nut jobs. Bad blood there. Why is there a hole in the wall in the abandoned apartment? Some lunatic lost his mind. All kinds of morons pass through these halls. Okay. With how small these rooms are, wouldn't you want to break the wall down? Yes. Is one of the residents on a vacation? Their mailbox is People overflowing. come and go. I don't keep an eye on everyone. Yes, you do. I know you do. Who lives in apartment 10? No one lives there. It's been empty for months. Bullshit. I talked to someone through the door. Impossible. I would know if someone had moved in there. Maybe it's those countercultural people again. Breaking into a house like it's a public space. You're a policeman. Be good and take a look, will you? See what Great. I can find. Young people. Who They're lives behind the rats. padlock door? You know, always littering the hallways with trinkets and empty beer cans. Oh, that one is a scientist. A future scholar. I think he studies astrology at the community college. Education's good. I always tell them to study. Astrology? Something to do with all those stars around his door. He asked me to leave his drawings up on the wall. Something to do with all the stars. Oh, she thinks that the stars, because he's into astrology, He's a, when he's a communist. Oh, astronomy, not not the fucking star signs. I think that's communism. The of what and how? Uh. I'm going to choose the most boring option: communism. It's a political ideology. Because all of these other statements m make it sound like I have an opinion on this, and I really don't. Ah. <laughs> all I know about politics <laughs> is that it's brought us more harm than good. Gleaning <laughs> lady, I love you. <laughs> I knew it. I knew the boring option would be the best one. Politics has brought us more harm than good. I agree. What can you tell me about Cindy? The artiste. Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the walls faster than I can clean them. Still. <laughs> she leans on her broom. She leaves an old lady to her business. More than I can say for others. That's all. Thanks. She mumbles some kind of a response. Then hacks something into her handkerchief. Thanks, I'm off. Okay, let's investigate further. Wasn't there something we could do in here? No, okay. Uh, we were gonna go check out the balcony again. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says, Ten. This apartment is supposed to be empty. Did you break Thank in here? You me? 
scare them. Suspected of some big crime. There's no sweet talking your way in there. Be official. I don't need a warn if I suspect there's been a break in. Are you cooking morphine in there? <laughs> Why would we assume they're drink they're making morphine? I need to verify your identity. Oh, come on. That was smart. Fucking Kim thinks we're smart. Let's go. I'm in. Johnny Disco coming in. Let's inspect her environment first. Looks like a fine mattress. Why is it up against the wall? What have you done? What do we got here? Blistered pack of medicines peeks out of the do box. You should take it. Hypo <laughs> hypnogamma. Ah, that's really what I've been missing. <laughs> Plus one to indirect modes of taxation. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is put some cigarettes in my hand. Just in case I need to blast one for the extra intelligence while I talk to this individual. Satisfied? My name is Marielle Charpentier and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? Her what? voice is really cheerful, despite her obviously hating you. What? Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? Yes. She fumbles through her purse, fishing out a light paper-clad passport. Let's inspect it that. It feels flimsy in hand, with the words Revachol Zone of Control, written under a nondescript municipal logo. There's a picture of her with shorter hair inside, along with all her personal details. Be friendly. Everything seems to be in order. Let's put her on uh, 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 at ease. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I need to be back in Midtown in an hour. What are you doing here? I need to get it ready for the next lease, but as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. I fuck shit up too. Not gonna say that though. Reprehensible. Who lived it here? It was some kind of a moribund old man who used to be a business owner. You'd think they'd make rent. A sudden serious look crosses her face. This story didn't have a happy ending. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted, or is that it? I'm in a hurry. Who lives in the foreclosed apartment down the oh, hallway? Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We closed the apartment and planned on auctioning off the valuables, but... I said who? And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. And there's a hole in the wall. So preppy. She's probably on some low-grade performance enhancers, like Preptide or Pericanine. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The money's gone. Just like that. Oh, it irks her. The incompetence. My money also disappeared, I think. Well, it does not disappear from my hands. No, I don't let it. It couldn't have been that much money. These apartments look pretty shabby. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life, spark, and they are affordable. Lady, are you looking at the same reality that I'm looking at? I mean, her gambit is to sell shit, to sell literally shit, to make it sound like this is a, a, a fucking place worth investing in when it doesn't really look like it's uh, seen its best days in a long, long time. I'll tell you, 
Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives and those radio computer wizards. Now, I do like that optimism. I'd love to see it blossom, too. It's as if they're real wizards, able to resurrect dead real estate and breathe life into bank accounts. I mean, she is, so far, one of the only people who seems to enjoy what she does. Which is interesting. Kind of an anomaly. What happened with the wall? Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. She's still shaking her head. Manicured hands now crossed over her chest. That's all. Of Thank course. You. She replies with a smile, but her eyes remain glazed over. She's been waiting for you to leave. Well, then. I guess that's what we'll do. Okay. Let's go check out that rooftop again. Let's try that number 28. See if our gentleman is home. It is 5 p.m. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. Knock. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. Okay. We should return tonight after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? Tonight at 9 p.m.? Tonight at 9 p.m. Right here. Apartment number 28. Good. Let's go. Okay. We shall return. We are running out of time to get money for uh, our two objectives. One, healing the traumatized youth with pulp literature. Two, securing a place of rest. There's another balcony. Ah, Cindy. Cindy, do you have any money, Cindy? Ooh, the piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves, but here you are. Now that I'm up here, I can arrest you. I'm going to play along. That's right. We've evolved. Yeah, I can see that. Cool mutation. <laughs> that smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Is that heavy fuel oil? Red dyed heavy fuel Got oil intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Ba she really did it. She's proud of it, too. Fumes are bad for you, okay? That's some clever cultural commentary. Sure, why not? You ain't seen nothing yet, piggy boo. Stop calling me a piggy. I will arrest you. What are you doing? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. So you don't know what to Have write? Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mona was here. We rarely see pigs around here, though. Just union cads. And my name's not Mona, so... She wants it to be something true and total. Why are you committed to defacing the building? This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up. You know, summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. Yeah? <laughs> Actually, I don't have an opinion. I mean, about this, I really don't. Lying is cool, I guess. Catch you later, Cindy. Whatever. I don't know. 
Uh, is there any money in that box up there? That's a good question. There is! Holy shit! Tarps flap in the wind. Forgotten banners of nails and nails rust. Holy shit, we have enough money to buy the book. What's in here? Someone's been sleeping here recently. Enough coal to last for several winters. We can buy the book! Oh, we've got some pants, some jeans. I don't know why they're hanging out in there. Although these jeans look worn, the wearer must have had an ass given to them by the mighty lord himself. That beautiful peach-shaped man-ass has imprinted itself so deep in the fabric you can't but wonder if wearing them would start molding your own vague rear side into a more shapely form as well. Okay. These Purr and Ingersoll shoes have no lacing but a strap and a buckle. Due to their elegant and affluent design, they have been described as the most advanced dress shoe. So advanced that walking through slush and mud does not leave a single trace on them. Okay, interesting. What, uh... Maybe if I put the crowbar in my hand, I can blast that thing open. I can! Holy shit! A fucking cash! There's just cash lying around. More cash than I found all day. <laughs> okay, okay. So... We are going to try to find a deeper source for money. But to round off today's playthrough, I want to buy this book and give it to Kuno. So that's what I'm going to do. First, I will ask Joyce if she has any interest in lightening her own pockets in uh, support of a good cause. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Do you have any money? No, she doesn't. Okay. Let's leave. Um, book. 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 Communism, fascism, moralism, ultra-liberalism, what did you choose? Nothing. <laughs> I chose none of those. I chose uh, none of the above, and I am perfectly fine with that. What's a net up to these days? Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? Yes, I am. I just like, I just like talking to her. I would like to buy the book, please. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Kjelmdal somewhere. Are these, these are both Kjelmdal books. Oh yes, certainly. Another good sale. Another good sale. Okay. We will find other ways to get money. I am sure of it, but I must give this book to Kuno. I must make some sort of positive change in this world. This is it. This is the big moment. I hope this doesn't disappoint Have you me. Come to make your offering to Kuno? This is probably too lame for you, Kuno, but maybe you know someone. What about the Helm Dollar Man book? Uh Kuro doesn't fucking read. Fucking book shit. Fucks with your mind. <laughs> Kuno knows this four-eyed fuck. Totally hooked on the book. Can't get enough of this shit. Fucking sad, really. Kuno could make mad money off him. Exploit his disease. <laughs> Kuno. I'm trying, I'm trying to help you here. Who are you talking about, Kuno? A guy Kuno knows! Martin, from out of town, from Grad or some shit. 
So you want the book? Fine. Kuno's gonna take it off your fat ass. At least he's gonna make some paper off this shit. Now what you want? Oh. Do I have any points I can dump into empathy to help Kuno out here? I do. I'm doing that right now. Okay, I, I realize now I could have tried it and then <laughs> put the scale in after it. I just got excited, so. <laughs> Let's see if uh, talking to him will um, help us out. You there. found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? I phased shift through the roofing material. Shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. Kuno's starting to think I'm pretty cool. He can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. Yes, we can. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? What was with the pig head? Oh, that. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Were you trying to send me a message of some sort? Uh, yeah, to the both of you. Watch your ass in Kuno's town, or Kuno's gonna fuck your head off. I found a plate covered with powder residue. Do you know anything about it? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. What's with the magnesium, Kuno? It's a vitamin pig. Don't you know anything? He looks at you like you just pointed at the sun and asked what it is. You could use some. It's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through. I like do a like human magnesium. Day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's gonna use it against you, Kuno. I know all about magnesium. I rock it all the You're time. You're not getting this pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. He looks at you, eyes bulging. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're going to OD and you're going to fucking die. I've heard enough cool, of this. Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Okay. What's going on with this kid? We gotta try. It's not Kuno. It's Kuno S. Yes. Interesting how... Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something. Something very bad. She came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name. Kuno S was the one who wound him up and directed him. Kuno. Also, Kuno hasn't stopped talking to you. Even enjoys it from time to time. When you talk to the other one, it's like talking to a cornered animal. She only hisses and says murder was the case that they gave her. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. I'll do anything. Kuno. Fuck you whispering about. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you f whispering about. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's going to fucking whisper. Okay. Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. This is the most important thing to me so far. And I, I, I have continued to say that when, when you want to understand this world, you have to look at the kids. <laughs> they're, they're the outcome of all of this, like depression and cultural decay and like so many things going on what 
we if we can help Kuno, we can do something to unwind this knot in the world. What's with her? She's terrifying, crazy, scary. Crazy? You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane, dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in, probably even pigs. What? Stop talking to him. Kuno, I'm fucking warning you. You're going to get us into shit. It's not lost on me that there is a, uh, a female influencing male dynamic here as well. Maybe the other book actually would have been more appropriate. Because it's something that Harry also relates to. She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see? Did Kuno not tell you? Kuno told you. Kuno talks to whoever he wants. Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. Oh, I love this. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her so she can't read his lips. Fucking Kuno in the packet. Let's go. What do you mean she smoked someone? Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like, actually a killer. Really? Isn't she too small to overpower someone? Are you getting this? You think I'm fucking telling you a joke here? How hard do you think it is to kill a fat ass? Sweet talk him, then knife him. Holy shit. She's probably killed a pig too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. How many? Forget Kuno said that. Kuno was just shitting. Kuno was just running his mouth. Kuno's stupid like that. Kuno's stupid like that. Kuno, you're not stupid. You're 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 an intelligent person. Why hasn't anyone told you that? The creature peers at you both from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. Fear. Fear of the truth. Oh fuck, yeah. You think she has anything to do with the dead man? Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up. But she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Where were you? Look, Kuno's gonna put you at ease. We didn't do it. Okay, I knew that. You said she's insane. Yeah, she's psycho. None of that kiddie psycho, cat burn and shit. She does the real deal. I mean, what this tells me is that like Kuno is self-aware that what he puts on is a front, right? Because he he's able to see that she is clearly. Um, more invested in like her particular psychiatric issues than he is. What's the real deal? Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. What's the language she uses? Fuck knows. She says it's the song of her people or some shit. What people? Crazy people. The fucking knackies. I don't know. Some things are too awful to dwell on. The Nakis and Runkaris might be some kind of defense mechanism. Is she your sister? Fuck no, she's not my sister. She's just a stray who got in, like a mad dog or some shit. Stray? Yeah, she was just there. What was that, Kuno? The little one twists her neck looking at the building. She was in the hallway, dripping wet by the fucking shoe rack. In the dark. That hallway there with the janitor's closet? Yeah, that's the place. She was just balled up near the closet, psycho style. Why was she Kuno's dripping wet? Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days, in the corner, every time Kuno went out. You said she got in. How? I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home and she's sleeping under the desk. Under a pile of clothes, like a dog. What about your parents? Finally, we can fucking ask the question that's been on my mind this entire time. Where are your parents? Where is the school? Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there. Or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. Kuno? Kuno. Kuno S. Two of a kind. Why is she called Kuno S? she fucking looks like Kuno. You don't know her no name? No one knows her name. Kuno told you, this shit was psycho killer. How are you dealing with all of this? How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. 
He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. C doesn't either. Kuno's got this shit under control. You need backup, kid. I'm here for you. Listen, listen. C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C. You fuck with Kuno. You threaten her. You threaten to take her away. This is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. I am going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her, sneak up on you later, and fuck you up. Do you understand? The boy looks you in the eye. Black people is trying to focus. He may not be able to do it, but he will try. Right now, he believes he will. Goddamn. I can respect that. All right. Now we can do business. What I appreciate about this is that, like, we were able to speak to him, like, as an adult, right? I think dismissing what he had to say would have been, like, it would have reinforced his idea that the adults of this world don't understand him or what he cares about. And he has a complex relationship with Kuno S. Clearly, like, he has an attachment to her. But he's also somewhat scared of her. It's a little bit like codependency where he can clearly rationally see that she is maybe a bad influence on him, but she's also the only person who he relates to and the only person who looks out for him and that he looks out for. And so he can't exactly remove her from his life either because he does care, but he's also able to see that she's not exactly in good health either. What kind of business? Yeah. What do you want? Kuno can hook you up with. Oh, don't hook him up with shit, Kuno. See, relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. I respect the Kuno. Kim, I cannot believe you didn't think this was worthwhile. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style. Pig cooker. That's right. Kuno's a candy store for pigs now. Get ready to be rewarded. All right, we've done it. We've 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 gotten the Kuno in in our bank. Uh, is there anything else we can discuss crime scene the related? Fuck about it. Have you seen anyone suspicious? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno. Where's the rest Kuno of his armor? Kuno doesn't give a shit about the armor. How come? That fucking had one thing majorly wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. A mutant? Do you remember how he looked? Fucking growth hormone shit. He's a giant. The armor's too big for any man. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. Oh, come on. He's just pretending that he doesn't care because he's too small for the armor. What do you mean you threw it Kuno away? Kuno tried to get the helmet on. It was too big. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea, rugby style. That shit means nothing to Kuno. It's so sad. He like tried to wear it and realized it couldn't like, so he just threw it away. Yeah, that shit means nothing to Kuno. Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. You wanna fuck on someone about that armor? Go fuck the mustached union fuck. The jolly troubadour shit at the gate. You're just too small for the armor. Get the fuck out of here trying to fuck on me with that midget shit. Kuno's 12. He's huge. What are you? Fucking 80. When Kuno's 80, Kuno can fit four of you in Kuno. Fuck out of here. I also just want to point out, out of respect for the Kuno, I'm not blasting him with the flashlight here. Trying to fuck on Kuno. Fuck out. I'm not trying to fuck on Kuno. I'm trying to fuck with Kuno. We we fuck with each other. We're cool. What do you mean, Trepador? Yeah, cocking boot. You know that jolly union cow fucker? Came around talking about cows or some shit. Came around pretending like he cares about cows. So yeah, he's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about that armor shit. Okay. Coming here pretending like he likes cows. Trying to catch a peep of Kuno's armor. Go to the gate. Ask him yourself. I will. Yes. This troubadour has it. You can feel it. Okay. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost. Oh my God. About the crime scene. 
This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? How did the dead man's clothes get in the trash container? Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. I need to know. It could be a lead in the investigation. Listen, listen. Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Just listen. Kuno saw what you did there, dumpster diving. Sad shit. It was pretty sad. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price. 500 real. I, I don't have that kind of cash. Wait, I asked you what happened to his clothes. You must have seen them lying around. Look, Kuno ain't seen shit lying around. Except for that f you took away. Now you want performance gear or not, Grandpa? The lieutenant remains silent. But his expression couldn't say, <laughs> I told you so. Any love. Uh, okay, what's what's so great about these bands? Pig, these are foul modulars. Liquid fit, performance crotch, urban survival shit. Made in Mirova by scientists. Pants, scientists. Believe it, you need this shit. He unzips his jacket to give you a quick peek at the plastic wrap pants. They're graphite black and look brand new. These could drastically improve your chances of survival in the urban wilderness. Coach Physical Instrument endorses these pants. They are tartan ready. Really? My, my physical instrument agrees. Uh, I might be interested in the pants. Let's talk about that later. All right, Piggo. Shit's rolling. Don't do business with the pig, Kuno. We're doing business you now. your money, Kuno. As you can see, Kuno and C don't trust you. Can't do business without trust. There's more to his distrust than being a pig. He feels threatened by something obscure in you. What that is, however, remains a puzzle for now. There's also a mug in the trash. The fuck? A mug in the trash? Is this about the fucking clothes again? Uh, yes, this racist mug have anything to do with yeah. it. Kuno sees where this is going. Kuno's got that fast brain. You saying you pigs are after the mug fucker because he's the clothes fucker? Really? I can't hear you, Kuno. Speak louder, Kuno. That's exactly what I'm saying, Kuno. Somebody's tampered with the crime scene. Clean some of it up. Shit, that's tense. Someone's going to the beat-down basement, huh? Mug guy gonna get tied to the radiator. The kid may have something there. He's already come up with an interrogation technique, too. Kuno doesn't know who put that shit in there. And if he did, he wouldn't squeal. But if you find out, maybe you can... Stop turning into a pig, Kuno! They're trying to get you hooked on the snitching! Get away from my Kuno, f My Kuno. Yeah, get your bacon shit away! Kuno doesn't like to be seen with the popo! Get your shit done and out of Kuno's face! Oh, Kuno. We gotta do like a Jahari window on Kuno. <laughs> that ladder, no, yours? it's not fucking Kuno's. It's ancient. Look at it. I have played this whole game for this dialogue. Sadly, I'm not gonna like fully unpack it right now because it's time to end the stream. Um, but when we start our next stream, we'll talk a lot about this kind of stuff, about Kuno and it'll give me some time to reflect on everything that I've seen. He thinks you're fucking full, Kuno. He says you climb the ladder up to your magic tree house. Get the fuck out of here, pig. Kuno doesn't have a magic tree house. What's in the greenhouse? Keep that gardener used to work there. He used yeah, to work that's there. That's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. Shit, nothing to Kuno. Yeah, maybe next time we'll do the Jahari window with Kuno. Like, we'll do a big Kuno analysis. Because uh, there's some things I want to think about as I hear some of this and uh we're hitting that three hour mark on the stream where brain rot will set in and i will cease to have like good analytical commentary um i had no idea you could get this much intel out of kuno yeah i'm kind of surprised by it as well yeah what did you mean by... Look it up in the library. Kuno's not a fucking dictionary. Fucking small brain. Kuno means the gardener. All right. 
She's actually not a gardener. Turns out she's a union the fixer. The fuck does this have to do with the Kuno? Kuno doesn't give a shit who she is. You were expecting relaying this information to him to be more rewarding, right? Yes. Telling him you found out she isn't a gardener. You know what you should do if you want to get rewarded? Drugs. Drugs are more rewarding than work. Or alcohol. If you don't want to do drugs, alcohol is just as rewarding, but it isn't a drug. This has been going on for quite a while, hasn't it? You've been thinking about drugs and alcohol for a long time now. Juicy drugs, tasty alcohol. Seems kind of boring now, going back to... What was this about? Some yard? Yards aren't interesting. Only drugs are interesting. Drugs and alcohol. You feel sad now, but what can you do? Life has to go on. With a heavy sigh, you say... I might have questions later for now. Let's talk about something yeah, else. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Okay. We can't buy the pants. But at some point, we may try. More questions about the crime yeah. team? The kingdom of Kuno? The fuck do you want with it? Okay, we yeah, already talked about that. Kuno does the fuck we already talked about the shack. Pig mice. Kuno gets it from his dad. Kuno and his dad are major oh, suppliers. Oh, fuck. That's where That's... Kuno gets his lightning on. We are definitely going to talk about Kuno big time next stream because this piece, this piece, the fact that he gets his drugs from his dad and the fact that they are doing this together as suppliers changes a lot in the dynamic and would change the course of how I would help someone like Kuno very dramatically. Problem is, Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Streets going mad. Kuno's got to throw his dirty popo man at it. Okay. Dirty popo man is you. In there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids. And speed. If you can take him, you can have half of the speed. Is in there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can t take him, you can have half the speed. Who is your dad? Kuno? Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He's the most violent man in Revishol. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks too. Are you sure you can take on the most violent man in Revishaw? Hey, in we took on, uh, what was that guy's name? Measurehead? How much material are we talking? Like half. Half a what? A baggy, but like in this vial. But that's not very much material what at all. What are you talking about? Half a G? This shit is giant grade A shit. So clean you can barely see it. You can barely see it because there's barely any. I made up my mind, Kuno, and this is what's going to happen. Okay. Kuno's listening. I'm going in there for justice. I'm a narc, Kuno. I'm going to confiscate that crap. No. I'm going in there for justice. I'm a narc, Kuno. I'm going in there to confiscate... Oh, it's the same thing. I'm going in there, but not for the speed. I'm going after the most violent man of Revishol. That's what we're going to do. Sure, whatever. If you survive, make sure to bring that shit back to Kuno. Kuno's almost out. You wouldn't like the Kuno when he's out. Just get in the apartment building. Kuno knows you already fucked your way in. Kuno knows everything. Kuno does know a lot. Go to room 12, first floor, and kick down the door. Police violence style. Kuno style. And then it's action time. You're locked in the room with violent fuckheads. Man, yeah, the fact that he's orchestrating this, it, it, there's so many protective ways that he communicates things about how, like, he clearly doesn't have a good relationship with his father. It's hard for him to accept that, like, he actually wants us to go arrest him. So he's kind of putting it in terms of like, you should do this because you're a cop, not because I want you to, because 
of the emotional reason. That's it. Next time Kuno sees you, you better have his shit. I will. What the hell are you signing us up for here? Come on, Kim. Obviously, I'm not going to take it. We need to get drugs away from a minor. Yes! Kim, you have to have a good response to this. Come on. Okay, then. Yes! Yes! This is this is the, the storyline I care the most about. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, Kuno. And it's so obvious to me now. And I can't wait to discuss that uh, at greater depth. However, my brain rot is about to set in. And so we will end the stream here. And, and we will return next time to not kill Kuno's dad. We're not going to kill him. I just want to talk to him. I'm going to figure out what's going on here in a very calm and boring way. Yes, I will take the most boring approach possible, most likely. Um, because there's no room for extremism <laughs> when dealing with very sensitive subjects like this. Okay, that is going to be our playthrough for the evening. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, consider giving it a like and letting me know what you thought of it in the comments. You can subscribe to catch the next video here, or you can see things a little bit earlier if you support the channel either through Twitch or Patreon. Links to both of those and the community Discord are in the description. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.